Oh my god. Please forgive the fact that I am a sweaty mess right now. Also, the fan is on, so I'm sure there's a shit ton of ambient noise in this. But um, I went to Pilates earlier today, and it's kind of a humid day, and I forgot to put my brow gel on, so my eyebrows are melting off. And um, what has me so discombobulated, you may ask? As you know, our dear darling guinea pigs have been getting uh, big and healthy and strong. They are now, I think, 11 weeks, so they're um, supposed to be getting bigger, right? And for the past three weeks, so like basically since a week and a half after they got home, I started noticing that Dylan was um, always our little fat ass. Um, that was that was a nickname. We have our little Tara Payton and uh, my good girl, Gwenny. But we also have Dylan, my fat ass. Peyton, who will not let me pick her up for the purpose of filming, but there she is. You can see that she's just kind of gotten uniformly fat. Like she's just kind of, you know, she's rotund in the middle, but she, she looks, when she lies down, more like a cylinder or a rectangle than like a, a, a puddle or a ball. You can see Peyton, cylinder-like. Cylinder-like. My dear girl Dylan has just been getting rounder and rounder in like belly circumference specifically. So I've been um, really concerned about that. And um, I've done all my research, obviously, because I'm crazy and also because this is the profession I am trying to enter into. And from all the sort of research that I've been doing, you know, the most common issue here is, is, is bloat or parasites or some combination of the two. Um, bloat often happens when they're given too many like cabbage based diets or just some guinea pigs are particularly prone. Um, they get sometimes a torsed intestine and then they wind up just accumulating gases. But that's like an emergent diagnosis, right? So like Dylan's been eating and drinking and pooping and peeing absolutely fine, especially the poops have been absolutely fine. So honestly, like I'm thinking this doesn't really add up. And so at first I'm like, wow, she looks bloated, but like I'll just monitor the situation. Her belly's soft, it's fine, I guess. Um, it didn't sound hollow when I tapped it. They're, they still aren't that great socialize, on the socializing front, but you can imagine that at the time that I first noticed this, they were really even less socialized. So um, this was not fun for me or for Dylan to be tapping her belly. Two weeks passed, they're getting bigger and bigger. I finally managed to get uh, scheduled in at the hospital where I um, volunteer, where I've been like working for a while. Um, we have one vet who sees exotics, Dr. Kenner, she's fantastic. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'm gonna take them in just for a wellness check and also, you know, just make sure everything's okay. Maybe I should submit a fecal just to check for any internal parasites. Um, but I'm not thinking too far ahead. Um, but Dylan is just getting rounder, just getting rounder. Like everyone else is getting bigger. Although Gwen has put on significantly less weight than the other two, but like, you know, Peyton's getting bigger, Dylan's getting bigger, but also predominantly rounder. So now I'm worried. Um, I'm thinking ovarian cysts and tumors don't add up with the fact that she's literally under six months of age. She's like not even three months old yet. Last night, I'm sitting in the playpen, feeding the girls, and I just went, oh my god. And mom looks up, she goes, what? And I said, I think Dylan's pregnant. So before any of you start crying about how Peyton or Gwen is, are not actually females, the like Natalia um, took the girls when she was fostering them um, to a vet in Brooklyn, um, like the responsible foster mom she is because Empty Cages Collective is a wonderful organization and they got them checked. And at the time it seemed pretty obvious that all three of them were female, um, but that was also uh, when they were four weeks old. So Natalia says that as far as she knows, they were born in the first week of July. And then the vet records which she sent to me, um, which showed that all of them were in pretty good health, except actually Gwen at the time who was very skinny, had some sores and stuff from getting bullied, um, that they were um, four weeks and uh, Dylan was 500 grams in weight. Mind you, I was thinking to myself, I've, I've read all the like pregnant guinea pig uh, resource 
like that there is on the web and I'm thinking to myself that it just doesn't first of all pregnancy is pretty awful for guinea pigs so there are a high risk of complications like pregnancy toxicemia um, where your pig goes into ketoacidosis as a result of nourishment issues um, there are frequently um, sort of stillbirths and other complications um, labor can become very difficult because their pelvises aren't necessarily super awesome especially when they're younger or older in terms of being able to accommodate um, unlike other rodents like you know rats and mice that are, we're more familiar with you know the pink little naked bald babies that come out um, guinea pigs give birth to like very advanced young they're not nearly as altricial as other rodent young and so as a result they give birth to these very large fully furred basically independent um, young right away so <clears throat> very precocial young and can eat solids from the moment that they pop out of the womb so that's like hefty right pigs are not supposed to be bred younger than four months of age and older than seven months of age before that they're too young and after that their pelvises are so fused um, that they have a lot of difficulty um, with giving birth pregnancy carries a 20 percent mortality maternal morta mortality rate in guinea pigs so I'm sitting here last night and I suddenly realize that the timeline adds up. So at this point I'm a little terrified. I start doing my math. The youngest that males can sort of begin showing signs of sexual maturity is three weeks. The youngest that females can show can show signs of sexual maturity is like, you know, the first estrus cycle is very often four weeks of age. Um, at the very youngest, that's like the lower bound, right? Um, ladies were born the, four, the first week of July, and they were rescued sometime before uh, August 2nd, which is when Natalia took them to the vet. Natalia mentioned in passing that these three ladies were rescued alongside three males who went upstate to get fostered because you can't keep males and females together because this is what happens, right? The story is all six of them were crammed into the same tight, like, enclosure so that the sows and the boars were housed together. And I suddenly realized that if they were born the first week of July and rescued out of that situation at the beginning of August or at the end of July, that it is fully possible that Dylan experienced her first estrus, or all of them experienced their first estrus during that time period when they were exposed to boars. Earlier yesterday, I had picked up Dylan to once again just gently palpate her abdomen because I've been getting so concerned about it and I've been palpating all of their abdomens. Obviously, Gwen lets me do that a lot more than the other two. Um, Peyton and um, Dylan are not big fans. Dylan's belly um, has just been getting significantly tighter and tighter with time. There are no hardnesses. She doesn't seem uncomfortable when I palpate her. Um, so not really like a sign of bloat or an ovarian cyst. Um, but it's just like sort of like the skin of a drum getting tighter. And if you've ever known a pregnant human or been a pregnant human yourself, um, you know that's like what happens to the human abdomen when you get pregnant as well. And at this point I'm thinking, oh shit. And mom is thinking, oh shit. And I picked Dylan up again, remembering that earlier in the day I had sort of noted this change. And I feel, and I'm like, dear God, am I feeling little spines and little skulls right now. When we weighed her, she had more than doubled in weight, which Peyton did as well. So it's not really definitive because they are having growth spurts right now because they're still juveniles themselves. But um, I felt like I could feel some calcifications in Dylan's abdomen. At this point, I'm like, crap. They're supposed to see Dr. Kenner on Friday. 
today's Thursday, but I just uh, was so anxious, <laughs> not gonna lie, about this potential pregnancy that I just came home from Pilates and my doctor's appointments this morning and just loaded up the girls in the carrier, went down to the hospital and had um, some of the techs help me out with getting an x-ray. I'm pretty sure even any, like to the untrained eye, it's pretty obvious what these are and these are. Yeah, Dylan's not just pregnant with anywhere between one and three pups like first time mothers are. She's pregnant with somewhere between four and six. So, as if her being under four months of age did not make this already enough of a risky pregnancy, um, this has now become an ultra high risk pregnancy because that's a lot of pups. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There is like a weird little upside to this, right? Um, because they are juveniles themselves, they've already been getting unlimited pellets and they're all juvenile pellets and they're getting a bunch of alfalfa hay. Like things that you would, modifications you would normally make for pregnant females and because they're so young, they've all been getting it. So I highly doubt that like Dylan is, is malnourished in any way. I've been feeding them like a lot of fresh greens as well. But just to avoid pregnancy toxicemia, which usually hits in the last seven to ten days of pregnancy and judging by the size of those fetuses she's in the later stages of this pregnancy I might have to start giving her fruit just to make sure she doesn't dive nose first into ketoacidosis um, obviously I'll see what Dr. Kanner says tomorrow when I take him in again it is never a good idea to breed, your, to breed guinea, guinea pigs and I know a lot of you are thinking well then you know, ultimately there won't be guinea pigs for anyone to have as pets. And like, honestly, sure, fine, cool, amazing. Because it's really unethical to do that. And um, if you really want a guinea pig as a pet, uh, beyond just like the ideolog ideological question of, but then there would be no guinea pigs in the world. Um, there are so many pigs like Peyton and Dylan and Gwendolyn who are being housed in really crappy situations. And if you do a little bit of digging, you may actually find that there are adoptable guinea pigs very close to you. So I would highly encourage um, you to consider adopting a guinea pig before you go out and buy one even if the pet store is reputable because you're just perpetuating the cycle. And look, I was tempted to do that too. No one's a saint. But this is why <laughs> um, responsible guinea pig ownership is important. These guys are not just oversized hamsters. They require a lot of more specialized care, a lot more space. They have much longer lifespans. It's really, really, really highly not recommended by almost every vet that you see not to breed your guinea pigs. Not just because of the overpopulation issue, but because it is just so fraught um, for this species. Well, I think the only part of preparation that I have, I don't have right now, I don't have a nesting box, um, although, you know, she might not need one. She might do fine with, because the three of them get along so well already, um, most of the resources I've consulted seem to think that there's no reason to separate them. Um, they also, most resources sort of seem to suggest that um, having other sows around, like Peyton and Gwendolyn, during the birthing process and after the birthing, after the birthing process isn't necessarily a problem. Um, you want to be present for that though and supervise everything. Um, so I guess I'm gonna be on like piggy labor watch now. Um, I'm definitely not gonna be out of the house for long stretches of, of time until this is all over. I'm going to get some critical care on Amazon, which I was just looking up the other day um, and thinking about ordering some to keep on hand if I ever needed it. Uh, just because I, I don't think it would hurt at this point to supplement Dylan's calories a little bit more. And I need to build her a nesting box for when she inevitably starts giving birth, possibly, and afterwards if she um, needs to be encouraged to mother the babies. I should probably also have some resources on hand for um, the young in case um, Dylan rejects them. The only other thing that I'm concerned about, honestly, is that Peyton might just be less pregnant. <laughs> I really hope I don't have two pregnant guinea pigs on my hands. It seems unlikely. Again, Peyton is really not swollen around the middle the way that Dylan is, but, um, and she's softer when I palpate um, to the touch. But you never know, do you? So, this has been 
an adventure. Now, obviously, I'd be a monster if I didn't show you what Dylan looks like right now. She's the star of this show. Do you see how rotund she is in the back? She's really, really round. Uh, that's what sort of tipped me off. And when she lies down, which she does more frequently now, in open spaces, and at first I thought she was just getting more comfortable, and now I think it's that she's just so pregnant. You can, you can very clearly see, especially from above, that she and Peyton have very different silhouettes, and um, especially from Gwen as well. And um, when you palpate, you can feel little fetuses on either side of her abdomen. So, yeah. This is our teenage mama. Done got herself knocked up before her first period. Are you guilty too, Peyton? Are you also guilty? And as for the inevitable question of um, what I will do with the uh, offspring, should they survive, which, you know, everyone thinks that that's why I'm freaking out. That's not why I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out because I'm thinking of Dylan's well-being first, and then after that, I'm thinking of um, the well-being of the young. I'm going to find the young homes myself, um, or I will reach out to um, Empty Cages Collective for their help doing so. Um, I'm not going to sell them to a pet store. I'm not going to just um, relinquish them at a shelter. I don't have the capacity for um, an additional five guinea pigs or possibly six guinea pigs here at home, but I have a large enough network that I think I can find responsible pet owners for them. And because I also want the chance to educate those owners myself. Um, I really hope I don't wind up with an odd number uh, of guinea pigs because again, they are social and I would adopt them out in pairs. If there's an odd number of young, I might just keep one of them. Um, but I do need to do that within three weeks after their birth because uh, otherwise we'll just get more pregnant guinea pigs. Because um, if there are any males in the litter, that's when they will become sexually mature. So that's uh, the latest drama up in uh, the Bachelorette pad in here, which is about to be expanded by quite a number because of the fact that we had a little surprise, a little accident of sorts. So, um, yeah. Here's our pregnant girl. Oh boy just got off the phone with natalia who <laughs> is just as shocked and surprised as i am um yeah it's it's crazy right because basically she rescued them from a situation where the woman had sworn you know they had been surrendered essentially and and the surrenderer had sworn that she had separated the males and the females on time and it just clearly either she misestimated the age or she lied and the thing is <clears throat> Apparently, the three of them were born at this facility, so misestimating the age seems to be not probable. So I feel really bad because Natalia right now has a lot of logistics that she's now dealing with. Um, but, you know, I promised her that I would deal with the other end of this, which is just making sure that the girls are well and any offspring that the girls may have are well. She asked me if any of the other ones look like they're having pregnancy scares, and she, I said no. Um, Peyton seems okay. I'm, sh I'm very sure that Gwendolyn isn't pregnant. I'm gonna keep an eye on Peyton, but again, I don't think she's pregnant. Um, normally, like, play facilities like to keep, um, you know, juveniles longer, especially females, for this particular reason, but, you know, ECC doesn't even have a physical space, and they used to have a space that they could at least use. It wasn't their space, but it was a space that they were allowed to operate out of. So, you know, Natalia was excited because I'm obviously someone who works in the veterinary field and who is applying to be a veterinarian So I have the resources at my disposal to take care of them and look after them if they have any sort of complications Which is why she fast-tracked my adoption um, And be especially because she had more guinea pigs on the way so she had to sort of make this cost-benefit analysis judgment call of um, Keeping them on pregnancy watch a little longer or not and you know what they were just on the cusp of four weeks didn't make any sense to keep them longer with an adopter like me and on top of that with the fact that it was very unlikely that they were going to be pregnant but i guess we have our a little miracle huh is that you dylan i just ordered some critical care and yeah now it's just a waiting game she's due any day i think so i guess i'll really be at home a lot <laughs> for the next couple weeks 
<laughs> so stay tuned. Um, when the inevitable happens, I will definitely have footage of that so if anyone's interested. And yeah. I uh, have a teenage mom. Gonna be a grandma. Remember how I was saying I don't think Peyton's pregnant because she's much smaller than Dylan and they would have gotten pregnant within days of each other? It occurs to me she might just have a smaller litter. And I just felt her abdomen and there's some hard shit in there and I hope it's just poop. Because otherwise there's going to be a part two to this video coming very soon.